Hello everybody and welcome to another Horror Games tutorial. Um, this is part 7 and this will be episode, I think we're on 3. Let's double check. Episode 3. I'm going to do the lights and light switches in this one. Um, I've had quite a lot of people ask me um, how to do that in, the, in my inbox. So I'm going to quickly jump into this now. So the first thing we're going to do, you're going to be in your scene, your game, whatever your project might be. And then we're going to control and space bar to open up your content browser. Um, you're going to go somewhere within your content browser that you have your um, custom meshes or your blueprints, wherever it is that you're creating your... Uh, let's have a look, see what we've got. I need to find space myself. There we go. So once you've found a place that you want it and you've created a new folder um, and then we've gone into that folder, you're going to right click and then you're going to go to blueprint. So that's right click, blueprint and then actor and you're going to name this one to ceiling light. I'm just going to write tutorial so I know that it was not a one that I want to use in my own games. And then we're going to right click again and get another blueprint. <coughs> and this one is going to be your uh, blueprint actor again. And this is going to be the light switch uh, BP tutorial. Okay, so we've got a ceiling light and we've got a light switch. So we're going to open up our ceiling light first. And if you've already got a blueprint interface then that's great we can you can utilize that if you haven't got one and you don't know what one is then if you go on to my main page go to videos or playlists look for I'll link it in the description you want to open up um, my Unreal Engine 5 horror game tutorials part 7 episode 1 and that's called setting up blueprint interface and creating our line trace interact system for Unreal Engine 5. And that's what we're going to utilize to interact with all the interactable objects within your game. So once you're in your blueprint for your ceiling light, <coughs> we're going to go into the top here where it says components. I'm going to click on the add button and we're going to add a static mesh. This one, and we're going to name this to uh, light mesh, and then we're going to add another component. I'm going to click the plus button, and this is going to be your let's say point light. And you can use anything, it can be a spotlight, point light, uh, it can be a rect light, it can be um, anything you want, whatever you want to add in, as long as it emits light. Apart from a directional light, I think that'll be a little bit. I mean, you could probably do it, but it would be a little bit weird and probably break the game if you've got to. Um, so, once we've got our point light in and our light mesh that we've added our static mesh in, we need to actually give it a physical body. So, we go over to here on static meshes and let's type in cylinder or maybe a cube. Let's get some kind of a cube in. So scroll down until you find one. Um, we'll adjust the size slightly and then stretch that out. Okay. <coughs> now we need to give it some kind of a texture. So let's give it um, just a default black. Just to represent off. So like a matte black. That's, so that's the default. Compile that. Save that. So we've given it a texture of black, matte black, so it represents the light being off. And we've applied a static mesh cube into the scene, so we've got light mesh and point light. If you've got more than what you can see here, you've gone a little bit further into the step or the process that we need to. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we are going into our event graph. We're going to delete the three... Um, starter nodes that we have there. We're going to go to class settings. Now if you have a blueprint interface this is where you're going to um, implement that into this blueprint. 
So we're going to go into class settings, go down to where it says implemented interfaces. I'm going to click on the add button and this is where you're going to type in whatever you named your blueprint interface. So in my case, it's use, open and close because I know that I'm going to be using it to use on objects and I'm going to be opening things and closing things. So I just named it that just for convenience. So once we've done that and we can see that it's added it in, we then go into compile and save and then right click add custom event <coughs> and then we're going to name this one toggle light and then we're going to add another custom event uh, <coughs> excuse me add another custom event add custom event and then we're going to name this one to light on and then we're going to add another custom so you can control C if you want to and then control and V and then we're going to rename this one light off you can rename it in the top there and then save it compile it and then we should have three custom events in a row just like this so toggle light light on light off give you a second just in case you're still doing that okay so Moving on, I'm going to make a little bit of space between these. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight our mesh, which is this one. We're going to drag and drop that into the scene. Out of light mesh, we're going to set material. <clears throat> we're going to click on our light mesh to see how many index elements we have. Now, we only have one which means one texture on that object. So we can leave it to element zero. So what this is gonna do is when the light turns on, we're gonna set a material. So to do that, we're gonna control space. Let's go into where we have our blueprints. We're gonna create a texture. So right click, material, and then we're gonna type this one into light on material. <coughs> And then we're going to double click on that and you should have this screen this is what you should see now we're going to hold free on the keyboard just like that and let's move that oops so hold free i don't know where that's just gone yeah anyway so hold free on the keyboard on left click to get a constant or free constant and this is where we can set the color so we're going to click down here on the left side and we're going to set this to a bright white and then click OK <coughs> out of the top of the node we're going to cl uh, click and drag on the output into base color and then we're going to control C and control V, copy and paste. And then we're going to drag, so we're going to press M, so hold M on the keyboard, M for mic, and then left click to get a multiplier node. And out of the top pin on this one, we're going to drag that into A. And then we're going to get a parameter, so hold S for sugar, and then left click. Oops. And then we're going to name this one to uh, brightness. And then we're going to drag out of the pin on brightness into B on the multiply. And then from the multiply output, we're going to drag that into emissive. And then down here in your parameter, we're going to set that to five. Now we can see that it glows. I'm going to click apply, save and we can close that compile your ceiling light just in case you've made changes so now that we have our texture and now that we know what we want it to be while it's on we're going to click on this and this control c and then control v and paste that underneath so we're going to get a copy of exactly what's above on your light mesh left click and then we're going to get this material by clicking well we want we want it to be that same material so click here and then click on this arrow 
here and then that will drop that into that box for you. I'm going to connect the light off to the set material node and then for this one we want the we want the material that we've just created so let me go to that which is this one the one that you just created with the emissive properties so I'm going to go into our blueprint and we're going to left click to select that you can search for it here as well if you want to by clicking on the drop down box and then typing it in so we now have <coughs> when the light comes on it will set the material to that glowing emissive texture that we created and when the light goes off it will set it back to that um, black color that we had so light on goes into the input on set material the next step we want to do is we want to drag a reference to point light into the scene and we're going to set visibility which is this one and we're going to connect that up to your light on through your set material so it looks like this copy control C control V and then the light being on we want this to be on so the visibility of the light will be set to on in our scene over here on our components list we're going to click on our point light and then type VIS and then disable we don't want it to be visible unless the lights on <coughs> so compile save and then we're going to do the next step so down here we have our variables panel and then we're going to click the plus to get a new variable I'm going to leave it as a boolean which is the little red one I'm going to name this is light on with a question mark and we're going to drag out of light on is light on and we're going to drop that on the output of your light on event so following across we're going to place it here and then we're going to set it is on because the light is on this is a question we know the lights on so the answer is yes is light on yes tick we do the same is light on we've turned it off so it's false so uncheck don't, don't tick the box so now that that's set up the next step we're going to do is we're going to hold B for Bravo and get a branch or you can right click and type branch which is this one it's exactly the same and we're going to drag hold control on the keyboard left control and then click and drag to get to get is light on instead of setting we don't want to set it, we want to get it. And then we're going to drag out of the output to the condition on branch, toggle light into the input on the branch. <coughs> and this is where we set up our um, toggle events. So is the light on? If it's true and the light is on, then we clearly want to turn it off, right? So if you think is the light switch turned on and the lights on then what would happen if you press that light switch again it would turn the light off so we set light off there light on goes into false so is the light on if it's true we want to turn it off is the light on if it's false then let's turn the light on I hope that makes sense so we should have this simple very neat very tidy line of code so we're going to move that down a little bit highlight all of the bottom part for the light off press c to comment and then turn light off and then do the same for the light on c to comment turn light on <clears throat> you can change the size of the text so if you click on the box get rid of that and then you can 
set the text size just like that so you can e read it easier and then this one is going to be C for comment and then we're going to toggle light on off <coughs> okay the next thing we want to do so let's compile and save that is so we've done that is light on we've got that set up yes and yes okay so I'm going to compile save and close we're going to go into our light switch blueprint so let's open that up and let's go to add on components and then static mesh <coughs> let's just drop in a cube and then we can change the size of this slightly okay so here's our cube this is going to represent our switch <clears throat> once you've made the code you can change this model to a model of a switch if you have one um, and then we're going to go into our event graph we're going to delete these and then out of on the left side sorry on your variable panel which is down here on the left side of your screen we're going to click on the plus button and we're going to type um, lights press enter and then we're going to click where it says boolean and we're going to get a reference to our light blueprint that we just created so I didn't mean to minimize that sorry force a habit so control and space we named our light ceiling light tutorial which is important for this step so we're going to click in that box we're going to go to the top of the search bar here <coughs> uh, ceiling light tutorial now whatever you named yours to that's what you want to type in and then we're going to uh, go across with the mouse and we're going to click object reference we're then going to click public and then we're going to right click to create an array so that's name it to lights, search for your lights that you created, create it to public, and then right click on this once you're done to create an array. So when you drag that into the scene, you should have this nice little array box there. Um, on this one, we are going to uh, add custom event. <coughs> And then on this, let's just have a quick look at something just to make sure I'm doing it in the right order. I've made that many tutorials recently that my brain's starting to hurt. Yeah, that's fine. So this is a bit a bit more complicated than what I'm going to create. What I'm creating is a lot easier. Um, so out of this event, we're going to name this one toggle light sorry toggle switch <coughs> so you're in your light switch blueprint that you created I'm gonna add our first custom event we've already set up our light array so we're gonna toggle switch we're gonna get for each loop which is this one and then out of this we're going to drag first of all our lights and then we're going to drop that onto our array out of array element we're going to get toggle light which is from the ceiling light that we created so it should look like this so you should have your lights array going into the array input on for each loop You've got your toggle switch custom event into the execution pin for each loop. <coughs> Excuse me. Stay hydrated. Mm. Okay, so out of the array element on your for each loop, you're going to type in toggle light, and this is going to represent the light switch that we just created. So let me just quickly show you that. 
Um, so I'll go to content uh, and then it's custom blueprints tutorials. So we just, uh, not that one, we just created this uh, ceiling light. And so what this is doing is because we created a reference, um, an array with a reference to, to this blueprint, we're then calling that function when we click the switch. So it's going to get the lights that are set up to this switch, which is why we've made this public, which I'll show you that in a second. So we're calling this event when we click with the player. And then for each light within this loop, it's going to toggle those lights off. So we're going to drag out a loop body into toggle light, compile that. And then we're going to right click and then we've we have our uh, blueprint interface set up. If you haven't already done so, I'd suggest to watch episode one. So we're going to get event, and then I'd name mine use. Let's make sure I get the right one. Oh uh, yeah, right. So class settings, add, and then add the interface. And then we're going to save and compile. So I forgot to set up the blueprint interface on this one simple mistake to make but if you don't show the mistakes that people can make then they can't learn themselves so class settings and then down here to implemented interfaces I'm going to click on the add button and then you're going to get that blueprint interface that we set up to set up a blueprint interface it's literally just right click in your content browser go to blueprints go to blueprint interface and let's just name this one um, activate and then you double click it open. You just name this to whatever you want to search for when you find in your blueprint interface. Let's say activate, you call in editor, you save it, you compile it and you close it. And then if you go to class settings and you go to implement interfaces and then right there at the top, the one I just created. So that's what a blueprint interface is. You do need a line trace system or something to detect that you're looking or interacting with an object. That's also in that episode as well, but I will link that in the description or in the comments section. So now that we've done this, we're going to go make sure we're in our light switch blueprint. And we're going to event. And then we should have this one now appear because I've got the class settings set up. So we're going to use that. Now you should have a red custom event <coughs> with a blueprint interface symbol in the top right corner. If you don't have that and it doesn't look anything like this, then you're probably clicking on the wrong one or you haven't added your class settings in for your interfaces. So out of that, we're going to get, which one was it? Um, toggle switch so on your event graph on the left side I'm going to drag that in pop that there so compile that and save it so if we go into our map our scene and let's drag in a ceiling light and let's drag in a light switch So we have our ceiling light and we have our light switch. Now, how do we control this light with this? So if you notice when I click on the, let's change the color of that just so it's a little bit easier to see. <coughs> okay, so when I click on the switch, you'll notice down on the right side, down here, we have lights and array elements. So if we click on the little plus button, it will give us an option. Now we know that there's a light in the scene because we've added one. So if you click here, it will show you whatever's in the outliner. So if you drag a another one of these and alt and drag and then click back on the switch, there'll be now two in the scene. So let's delete one. So you click on your switch highlight your switch, click on the little eyedropper tool, which is sometimes easier, and then just left click on the light that you want to control. So now, if we dim the lights, 
set the mood. Drop that right down. Oh, not too far. 0 0.1. And then highlight our switch. If we then click on here to test our code, we can see the texture change to the emissive that we created. And we can see that the light has now come on. If we click it again, light goes off. Click and test. So this will work in game. So if I show you in game now, go in, play. If I go up to the switch and then I left click, the light will go on and off. Okay, so how do you add sound? It's a great question. So what you do is if you want feedback on your switch, we're gonna move this over and we're going to drag this out. <coughs> And then we're going to get a reference to our cube. And then we're going to drag out of our cube and get set uh, get world location. And then let's tidy this up a little bit. And then out of this, we're going to get a play sound at location. And then drag that in there. And then drag that in there. And then... If you have a switch sound effect, that's perfect. So then if we go into our sound box and then I'll just type in switch because I have one set up and an off. So do that, put that in and then compile and save <coughs> and then minimize and then it should play the sound. There we go. I hope that makes sense. And then if we go into our ceiling light, if we want to add sound to this, then all we do is exactly the same. You want to drag these out to make space. And then out of your light mesh, you're going to drag out, get world location, oops, <coughs> control, so highlight these, control C, control V, and then out of this, play sound at location, drag that into there, drag that into there. So we go light on, play sound, set material, set visibility. Let's see if we've got sound. There we go. <coughs> so we can do that and add into our code a light on. Um, in fact, we won't put one on the light off because the light's going off. We don't, we don't need it. And then out of your uh, drop down box down here we're going to set the audio sound level to 0.2 and then if we comply and save and then if we go into the game did i compile and save the switch we'll soon find out so we can hear that So the light comes on with sound. <coughs> um, yeah, so I hope that helps. If anybody uh, has any questions, leave them in the comments section. If you want to add another light switch that controls the same light, you just highlight your light switch, hold left alt, click on one of the arrows, and then just drag. So this light switch will also control the light. Oops. So you've got two light switches controlling the same light source. If you then want to add another light into the scene and have both lights controlled by one switch, so let's delete one, and then we go to Array, click the plus button, and then click the eyedropper tool, and then click on that. So now we have both lights. Because one was already on, Let's uh, turn that 
Bitcoin. Maybe let's close that one. Uh, yes. And then let's drag that out. And then let's get a copy reference to that one. And then let's try that again. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so a simple fix for that is if we go into our ceiling light and we get our is on, we can click that to public, uh, compile and save. And then if we click on our light, uh, let's say light on and then click switch. There we go. <clears throat> so that's one switch controlling two lights into your scene. Um, if you want to reduce the the brightness of your texture, you can just go into your texture and down here we can set that to one and then apply that, save it, close, and now you can see that it's not as bright. Um, you can change the attenuation distance. By attenuation, I mean it's the distance that the light projects. And we can set that here. We can do the same for the other one. So now the light's not projecting as far into the scene. So here's the last tip. I swear this is the last tip. So if you go into uh, where it says lit, and then we go down to optimization, and we click on light complexity. If we turn our lights on first of all let's actually turn our lights on there we go so press G on the keyboard so you can see so where you have <coughs> an overlapping ring as you can see here in the scene now blue is good which means there's no light source so the shade is not working very hard to create uh, shadows and projection of light green is clusters bad so this is where you've got a uh, large I'd say projection of light in your scene having too many of these close together is what causes the um, frame rate uh, frame rate drops so what you can do is activating this tool which is your light complexity to find that is optimi optimization view modes and then you go to light complexity so having this tool if you have a long corridor and lights and they're all set up like this. If you if you if you want to reduce the amount of frame loss in your games, check your lighting positions. And if you notice, it goes red when they intersect each other. So just drag them out so there's distance between each attenuation zone. So if I click on this light source and then I go to the point light, we can see here that the more attenuation, the larger the distance of that light source, the more it's going to intersect and overlap this other light. So let's set that to 400 and let's set this one to 400. And now we have, if we go back to lit, we can see that we have lights um, on a corridor but they're not overlapping so it doesn't reduce the frames as as much um well that's it for this episode i uh, hope it helped i hope it helped people learn a little bit about lights and how to make sure that they're not setting them up too close together <coughs> we've obviously learned how to create a switch how to implement that switch to different lights how to have multiple lights controlled by the same switch um, if you've got any questions, let me know. If you enjoyed this tutorial and it's helped you learn, then please click the thumbs up button. It really does help the channel because, you know, YouTube algorithms. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. It really helps the channel grow and it also supports me. Um, you can become a Patreon if you want to help support it in a different way. And there's also a link on PayPal for donations. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next one coming very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.